Chairman Elijah Cummings says that subpoenas are coming. What are you hearing? Yeah, House Oversight Chairman Elijah Cummings has made this a priority for his committee to investigate the security clearance process at the White House, raising concerns about officials such as Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump, who apparently had got their security clearance approved, overruled, and pushed through by the president despite concerns within the White House. Now, this whistleblower, who Elijah Cummings calls a whistleblower, Trisha Newbold, does not identify anyone by name according to the memo that Cummings put out today, but says there were 25 individuals that she listed since 2018 who's, who were allowed to get their security clearances despite initial denials by career officials who had raised significant concerns about their backgrounds. Now, according to this memo, it says this, according to Ms. Newbold, these individuals had a wide range of serious disqualifying issues involving foreign influence, conflicts of interest, concerning personnel conduct, financial problems, drug use, and criminal conduct. Now, she goes on uh, to tell House Democratic staff and Republican staff on this committee about a range of concerns about the way the security clearance process works at the Trump White House. She said there's not adequate staff to review this. She said there's not security, enough security to look over the personal security files. Now, she also says there's, a quote, an unusually high number of individuals who get interim security clearances who she said should not. She said these people who got interim security clearances were later deemed uncertain suitable for access to classified information. Now, on top of this, Kate, she claims that the White House retaliated against her. White House officials have. And she said that she was forced to come forward before this committee. Now, Elijah Cummings says that he does plan to subpoena in an individual, Carl Klein, who served as the personal security director at the White House. He plans to do that this week. Now, we have not heard back from Klein or the White House or any of those individuals, but we did hear just back from the top Republican on this committee, Jim Jordan who calls this a reckless use of whistleblower information, says that Cummings is mischaracterizing Ms. Newbold's, uh, what she told the committee, and says these 25 individuals, some of them were, as he says, uh, one was a GSA official who was on the custodial staff. So uh, debate going forward, but clearly the Democrats mm -hmm. in the majority, they plan to put, pursue this in the days ahead, Kay. Yeah, regardless, I think, especially when you see that dispute between Cummings and Jordan on there, more information coming out would be better to clear up exactly what's going on here. Great to see you, Manu. Thank you so much. We'll see you in a second. To be clear, the president has the unique power to override any recommendations when it comes to this and grant security clearances to whomever he wants, really. But remember, everyone from the president on down repeatedly claimed that the president, at least, had nothing to do with the clearance process of his daughter, Ivanka Trump, and his son-in-law, Jared Kushner. As a reminder, here's Ivanka Trump just last month to ABC's Abby Huntsman. The president had no involvement pertaining to my clearance or my husband's clearance. So no special treatment? No. And that is now all in question yet again. So what is the White House saying about this whistleblower complaint and the coming subpoena? CNN's Caitlin Collins is at the White House. Caitlin, what are you hearing right now? So far, we've gotten nothing from the White House on this request and what this fight is going to look like. And as Manu just laid out, eventually what this could end up with Pat Cipollone, the White House counsel, either being forced to accommodate the request from Capitol Hill or this is going to end up in a nasty, lengthy court battle. Now, we know, Kate, in the past that Cipollone, the White House counsel, has argued that he believes the president and the executive branch have the exclusive authority to either grant people security clearances or deny them. He does not think that Congress has the authority to get involved in this process in the way that they are trying and he has recalled these requests essentially intrusive in the past so it doesn't really shed a lot of light on whether or not he's going to be willing to accommodate with these requests now that uh, Elijah Cummings is in charge and is demanding these documents now we do know that in this letter Cummings wants to see information related to the security clearances of not only Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump but also John Bolton the national security advisor we've reported that the president got involved in granting Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump security clearances, even though Ivanka Trump in that clip just there said she did not know that her father was involved. And when we reported that, we had sources telling us that maybe Ivanka did not know that her father played a role 
in her getting a security clearance. Now, all of this is coming to a head as White House officials have been pretty uneasy about the topic of security clearances for over a year now, Kate. Ever since that Rob Porter scandal happened, mm -hmm. where there was so much scrutiny on how the White House was granting people security clearances, not just security clearances, but also those, those interim clearances. And that's what led to John Kelly, former chief of staff, changing the process. And that's when you saw Jared Kushner go from having that interim clearance to being downgraded until the president did get involved and grant him a permanent security clearance. So White House officials are not responding so far to this, but we know they've been uneasy about what information could potentially come out now that there's a microscope on how they're handling these clearances. Yeah, it also seems a process that there doesn't need, there in the past isn't this kind of confusion and unease with regard to how it all plays out. That, that what you're pointing out, I think is one of the most important parts right. here. Um, and that's a big part of this. That's a big part of this. There's so much scrutiny on this because they say, yes, the president does have the authority to do this, but because of the situation like with Rob Porter, which has had yeah. complete ripple effects on this administration, and that's why with this woman telling Cummings that, yes, the president does have the authority to do this, but the way they did it was irregular, it was often, and there were so many concerns that were never addressed, which is why those career officials had denied these people their clearances in the first place. Yeah. All right, Caitlin, good to see you. Thank you so much. For some more perspective on this, joining me right now is a former senior advisor to the National Security Council during the Obama administration, Samantha Vinegrad. It's great to see you, Sam. Um, 25 people, the claim from um, Trisha Newbold, 20, about 25 people, despite concerns and a range of concerns that were flagged with their initial uh, background checks, uh, 25 people overriding that and giving them security clearance. Does that, give, can you give me perspective? I mean, 25 or one, for someone who doesn't know, could be the same thing. Is 25 people a lot for this to happen? It, it could be, and look, it's a bit of Groundhog Day because another day, another process foul by the White House, but it's important to remind people why this actually matters. I yes, had a, please. I yes. had a top secret clearance at the White House, which means I filled out my paperwork, I didn't lie, I disclosed all my foreign contacts, and that meant that experts thought that I could be trusted with classified information, that I wouldn't inappropriately give it to a foreign government or misuse it. The fact that these individuals got security clearances over experts' objections means that there's a chance that foreign governments are inappropriately accessing the intelligence that these White House officials are seeing because these officials don't either don't know how to responsibly handle it or there's some other malign intent involved whereby they are somehow giving this information over to foreign governments. And so the question becomes, why would the White House, these multiple senior officials that are referenced in Monty Rogers' reporting, mm -hmm. why would they knowingly do something that would open up the risk that foreign governments were inappropriately accessing our information. What is the benefit to doing that other than perhaps the expediency of having more people with clearances in the situation room or reviewing information? So what, can you remind folks the range of possibility, and I'm sure it's far beyond what we could list out, but the range of possibility of what would be a red flag in a background check that, and look, some of the red flags can be cleared up with a conversation. With, with an with, honest conversation. <laughs> there you go. But what are we talking about here? The point of a counterintelligence, an intelligence investigation into an individual seeking a clearance is largely to make sure that they don't have any manipulation points, mm -hmm. that there's nothing in their background that a foreign intelligence service could use to manipulate them, knowingly or unknowingly, wittingly or unwittingly. That could be something like a secret, whether it's a gambling debt, an affair, or past drug use that they haven't been forthcoming about, or it could be a tie to a foreign government that they haven't professed. I was a French citizen when I joined the U.S. government. I had to give up my passport because they, they didn't want there to be any concern that I had allegiances anywhere else. Mm. It could be anything like that. The key issue is you can't lie about anything in your past. Secrets are manipulation points, particularly secrets related to a foreign government, because again, it begs the question, why would you want a foreign government to know something that the U.S. government doesn't? So when it comes to where it goes in, from here, <laughs> I am unclear as to, yes, a subpoena uh, to, to bring this senior official in to answer questions about, obviously questions are, why were these things overridden? Who told you to override these concerns and so forth? What could happen now? I, I mean, do you see a universe where when Congress gets involved, these some of these 25 people get their security clearance now revoked? I, I just don't it see it, It seems unlikely right? because the White House has doubled down whenever they feel cornered by Congress. And it's true, the president could give clearances to whomever he wants. We actually don't know if the president was involved in these particular Great decisions. Point. But there, are two, there are multiple right. kind of levels of this. But there are immediate yeah. impacts. If I, was, if I was an intelligence partner of the United States right now, one of the so-called Five Eyes, the mm -hmm. countries that we share most, most closely with, 
I would be really nervous about sharing intelligence with the White House right now, knowing that U.S. experts didn't think that these individuals could responsibly handle this information. It could degrade our actual intelligence sharing. And for people in the White House who got their clearances because experts thought they should, didn't have, the, didn't didn't have, have these red flags, I wouldn't feel comfortable sitting in the Situation Room and talking about top secret compartmentalized information with people that experts didn't think warranted a clearance. That could really impact the quality of discussion at the White House right now. And directly to your point, you would think that the president wouldn't want that as well. You want to be surrounded by trustworthy people. And that's so that you can have a real conversation without the wrong people listening. Right. And, and that's why th this this is this has popped up before. And now we're learning more information about how many people and and now it's going to go head towards a subpoena. This is why it is so head scratching and why when it came to the president being involved in the security, the security clearance for Ivanka and Jared, it was also so head scratching. If it isn't a big deal and you have the power mm -hmm. to do it, why was everyone lying about it leading up to it. it it fits to this really confusing confusing narrative that we've seen over and over again this pattern over and over again it's great to see you sam Thanks, thank kid. you so much i really appreciate it